Yo! I'm gonna be working on a 2012 WRX. This kid gave me some exhaust. Yeah, he gave me some other stuff too. He gave me a boost controller and uh, some bushings for his shifter. I'm gonna start on the bottom and work my way up because, I don't know, this is kind of funky right here to wrap. Okay, that's what I call a good enough wrap job. Yeah, that'll work just fine. Wonderful salt ridden WRX. Got a boost controller for it. I'm going to put that in so we can turn up the boost and blow it up. Yeah, that's fancy enough. So now you put this on here. Oh, yeah, that, that works real well. That's, that's great. Stick that in the hole. I got my YouTube destructions. Ooh, wow, you can read that. Looks like this is a two-piece downpipe, so I'm going to take it out in two pieces. I already put a gritty rear exhaust on this form, three inch, so it's two and a half going to three right now, and it'll be three into three when I get done with it. Yeah, this thing got some cool little license of steel on here, little uh, heat shield looking thing, little look cool thing. I don't think it's going to make it go any faster. Okay, he gave me these things. I guess I'll be doing these next. A couple of bushings for the shifter. They're neoprene. Um, I guess it'll shift better because the other ones are rubber, so they don't they won't move as much. They don't last as long, but they won't move as much. He's already got a neoprene bushing in this. That's fun. You watch people that sell this stuff on YouTube take this stuff out, and it's like, yeah, you just. Do this and do that and it just falls right out in your freaking lap. Not. Easy sell. Make it look easy. Yeah, they give you silicone. That's probably somehow supposed to make it easier somehow. This thing doesn't even line up. What a bunch of aftermarket. <laughs> look at the cute little turbo. Oh, I wonder if he hears that rattling around yet. Feel like normal shaft play. Yep, normal Subaru rattling heat shield. Yeah, that probably don't rattle. Yeah, if you ever put headers on a car from 20 years ago, you might have a 916 swivel socket like this. Wow. Amazing. Okay, I got the aftermarket blues. Come on, get in there. It's not square. That's it. I got this WRX back here again. I put a downpipe on it and some bushings and a boost controller. And he drove it for a couple hours with his friend showing off his cool go fast stuff. And he was buzzing down the freeway, bashing through the gears and uh, his shifter fell off. He poked a nice, poked a nice hole in the rubber. See that? The shifter went right down in there and he called me up and he's like, Ah! My car! It's not shifting! What do I do? You just put some stuff in it! So he showed up and apparently he, uh, he put this Cobb shifter in here a couple weeks ago. And, um, yeah, I can't, I can't really say if it was his fault or mine because, um, some of the parts are somewhere on the freeway. But anyways... I'm gonna jam this thing back in a hole. I give people a 50-50 warranty. 50 feet or 50 se seconds. But uh, this high performance stuff, these guys get a 10-10. It's amazing how many people think, yeah, I'm gonna take this 250 horse car and make it go 500 horse and uh, if something happens, it's your fault. Yeah, well, guess what, pal? That's not reality. Stuck that in a hole. I'll stick this in the hole. I don't see the other thing in the jiggy. I don't think he had it. Look at that fancy thing. Ooh, that's worth some money. I can smell the money. Okay, it looks like a thing. So I'm going to call this an engine and not a motor. What's the difference? Motor. Electric. 
engine, gas. This is how I got this engine, like this. He had this thing under warranty, and he brought it to the dealer because he heard a noise. It's obviously a rod knock, I showed you that. And um, they uh, got an approval to tear it down from the kid, and um, they called this a tear down. They took the oil pan off, they took the front covers off, the intake manifold, they took the flywheel off and clutch for what reason I didn't know to tell him that he had a rod knock and they uh, charged him I think over $2,000 and they called this a teardown. They told him his warranty was void after they tore it down this far because he had aftermarket exhaust on it. Totally ripped the kit off. Dealership in Minnesota. WRX Subaru dealership. I told him he, he should do something about it and talk to people. Apparently he can't get money out of them for being stupid. Um, they didn't even give him an invoice. I, I told him I wanted to look at the invoice. He says they didn't give him one. But anyways, I'm going to have to tear this thing apart and um, do a rebuild on it. Uh, those are really tight. Both of them bottom sprockets don't want to come off. They're going to strip. It's a common thing with these. I might have to do some major surgery. I got it. This one might be less fun. All I could do is just that. It just relieves all the torque pressure on it, you know. This crankshaft wouldn't turn inside the block for some reason. And I go turn this crankshaft and this is what I got. This crankshaft is no good. I'm going to send it out and he might have to buy a new one. It did not feel right at all. When you, when you take the pistons out of here and the block's all assembled, you should be able to turn this by hand and I couldn't do it. Alright, I finally got the block back. When you're putting this crankshaft in, you want to find the cleanest room you can possibly find. So of course, that would be my kitchen. You don't want any cats, you don't want any dogs, you don't want any hair, you don't want any wind blowing around, wives, nothing. Just you and a block in a really, really clean room. That's the best way to do these. Um, you can never have a clean enough room. I see some people put these together in a garage or outside with the wind blowing around. I just cringe. Thankfully these cylinders were all within spec. I had Jake from... Uh, Sanson Racing resurfaced the deck and uh, honed it out. He plateau honed it really good. You can probably see they're on the bearing. Yeah, I'm just I'm right at a thou and a half. Okay, everything's cool. Day. Like the doggy. Stay like the doggy. This is gonna piss me off. Alright, now before you get too carried away, you wanna center all these rods in the bore. Yeah, and you wanna make sure this crankshaft turns. And it does, it's real nice and free. You just squeeze it in like this, square this one up, these are too tight. That's all you need, just a little bit of oil on the skirt, you don't need to get all crazy. That's how you do it. And just tap it in real light. You just take a magnet, I can pull this connecting rod over. Try to fish this thing in here. Just like that. Okay, that's in there. Boy, I tell you, it's a little strange waking up to an engine block on your kitchen table in the morning. He gave me this stuff to put on. It's an aftermarket pickup tube and uh, an aftermarket windage tray. I all right, I had somebody help me bring this out in the garage. I can be a, I can be like a normal mechanic in a shop now and put the rest of this together in a garage. I had Jake do a valve job to these two. 
you, you have to assemble them to uh, to get the valve lash right. So I got to take all this apart so I can get it all the bolts. These get torqued to uh, almost nothing. I got this engine upside down. I'm going to put the exhaust on it. Before I do that, though, I'm going to give it a little prime. All, all of the rest of the stuff that I'm going to put on after this, I did not take off of the vehicle. Nick says, when I get done with this, I'm going to love Subarus. No, I love Hondas. He gave me one of these things to deal with. This deletes the factory wastegate. I guess it's over boosting on them. And uh, that might have something to do with the reason why I'm putting an engine together on it. This thing is just a little too short aftermarket. Oh, I got this aftermarket up pipe to deal with. I think I'm almost ready to put this engine in. I talked the guy into getting a clutch. Most machine shops, they charge you a little money to take these pins out. You can take them out yourself. All you need is a good claw hammer. That's all you got to do. Comes right out. The car is here. The only way my anxiety is going to dissipate from this thing is if this thing's in, running, and out of my garage. I got to get this thing going. Well, I think that's how that goes. Alright, I got this thing together enough to see if it's going to run. I'm just going to turn the key on a few times to prime the pump. Okay, it runs. Nice clean build. It didn't smoke like a mule because I poured oil all over everything. Um, yeah, sounds good. I'm gonna put the rest of this back together. Alright, this 2012 WRX, I got it all bolted back together. Um, the guy's gotta go get a tune on this car. I told him when he gets a tune he should probably get a wide band. Um, so he got all crazy and he bought this triple tree thing. I got to put on a pillar post and he got three different gauges. He got an oil pressure and a boost gauge and a wideband. So I got to put all this on his car. I'm waiting for the wideband to read something. Takes a little while for that wideband to read. There it goes. So that's what they do. These seem like alright gauges, I guess. Next up, diffuser. Because it diffuses things and stuff. It's science. There's your small game decapitator. Alright, the first little baby test drive. I took it around the block and that was uh, that was enough anxiety for me. Are the brakes alright? I mean, they've been sitting for a while. They're, they're rusty. Good. You'll knock the rust off of them right quick. 
Yeah, that would be the external wastegate. <laughs> Damn. The screamer that, pipe. That thing screams. Yeah, it's loud. So, it's working. I mean, um... <laughs> wow. Okay. Wow. I'm impressed, Rick. <laughs> I you really haven't good. even got on it yet. like it hit about 12 pounds of boost and you got a little shimmy in your steering wheel there is it always been there Must be the when you hit the brakes yeah you've been doing some high-speed braking on this you warp the rotors or what um, I, think so. and I can put some of those on too man if, if it doesn't if it keeps doing it after you knock the rust off of them yeah that pipes a little loud I got the Nick Mobile in here again. He wants some uh, headlights. He's got the fanciest license plate bracket I have ever seen in my life. Some superstar named Perrin made that. Yeah, I noticed this, so I turned the lights on and I text him. I'm like, hey, dude, why'd you put that brown splurge of paint on your on your fog light? And uh, apparently that's because he put a vinyl sticker over this. It's for fog lights, so they melt and they make a nice brown spot. So those are a license of steel. If you're thinking about buying them, don't get it. Yeah, I think it looks pretty cool just like that. Why put a cover on it? Ooh, look at that fancy. Wow. That looks rich. That looks like something I can't even afford. There it is. New and improved soy sauce. This thing's back again. And now he broke the transmission. So I'll be doing that. He just got a used one. 2012 WRX. I'm digging the four wheel drive lifted look. Wow, oh, those are pretty light. Fancy. Ooh. It's gray and funky looking. Got a little bit of metal stuck to the magnet. All the rest of that stuff that's in there looks like it's mostly aluminum. I don't know if that's normal or not, but that looks fantastic. That'd be a cool color for a car. I got you, you little brat. If it don't go in just perfect, you're probably gonna wreck something. There it is. It's all the way in. That's how you do it. Now if I did this right, it should work. I'm gonna start it up and go through the gears. <laughs> this guy told me he wants me to test drive it. I said, no, you test drive it. I don't want to test drive it. But I guess I'm gonna grow a pair and go for a drive. Oh my God, he's got a TPMS light on. What do I do? It makes swooshing noises and it backfires. It must be junk. More swooshing noises, more backfiring. a lot of funny noises other than that the transmission works 2012 WRX is here again his pull cable for his gas door actually broke he thought it was just this lever this thing's like destroyed the pins broke in here so he got a new one of those I took it out for him they found out the gas door cable was broke too. And this one's all rusted to hell. A little plastic snapped when I took it off. I told him to mail order some cables because it'd probably be cheaper and I gave him a vice grip to use and sent him on his way. So I got two cables to replace. Here's the fuel door. You just turn this thing counterclockwise and this pops out. And then I gotta take this cable out. 
I'm going to try to get a little tricky with this so I don't have to take off too many panels. These are the ends that go into the handle. So I'm just going to take and cut these old cables. I'm just going to tape these down. I can get my vice grip back. I can just pull these through. Hopefully they won't snag up. I think this is idiot proof. I don't think you can mix these two cables up. There's a Y and a G right here for yellow and green, I think. That don't look yellow. It looks green. Green and gray. What the heck? These people are colorblind or something. I don't know. Ew, what's this nut for? I don't know. I didn't do it. It wasn't me. Get this thing in here somehow. These people are mean. Subaru does a lot of mean stuff. I got it. This guy's scaring me with all the <laughs> he wants me to do to it. He wants an E85 the car. And he gave me this uh, oil separator. I don't know why he gave me this because I just rebuilt this engine 30,000 miles ago and uh, doesn't have that much blow by if any. Dog bone. Gave me some cooling system thing to cool a cylinder thing. Ethanol flex fuel kit. Pressure sensor kit. He wants me to put some spark plugs in it and a thermostat. I guess he's pulling a thermostatic time code. He's got an AEM fuel pump I'm going to put in it. Some really fancy fuel injectors. Some stuff in a bag to confuse me. He's got some exhaust leaks because, um, because he bought an aftermarket exhaust system and the gaskets are which I already knew. And uh, he's got this funky TGV delete kit. He bought used, really fancy, looks like it was all 5-axis CNC machined, um, gasket for that, some more stuff to confuse me, and um, that's too much, all that junk. These little rusty buggers are 8 millimeter. Free gas! And this pump should come out. It's not coming out. Give it a little friendly persuasion with the slide hammer. <laughs> uh, see if this works. Oh, look at that, like magic. See what we got in here. We got instructions. Yeah, who needs those? No fancy sticker. What's up with that? They give me a wire. Do it yourself or wire? Yeah, I'm gonna stick it in the hole. Just roll that around, mash it in. I got a little keeper. This thing's cheesy. What the heck? It won't even go on there. What a bunch of cheesy crap. Aftermarket cheesy, cheesy junk. Jesus, man, these people and they're just horrible cheesy stuff. Try the factory sock. This seems to fit a lot better. A lot of the Hondas are the same way. You don't use a sock that it comes with. It don't work. Save that for something I'll never use it for. There, it's a unit, and um, it's supposed to work. Well, I got that off. There's really no good videos on it, and um, I know why. Because this job really, 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 really sucks. This is just the biggest conglomerate mess of junk you would ever see in your life. I looked on the IAG website to try to figure out how to put this on. They got a PDF file for this thing, and that totally blows, too. They're about as descriptive as, I don't know, some kind of junk. Well, after reading the, the PDF file from IAG and a few other 
things about people doing things. I figured out how to put this on. You know how you take care of this? You take it off and you have the guy sell the piece to somebody else. That's how, because I'm not dealing with it. It's a joke. Got hoses going all over the place. Delete this stuff in that. All that. Well, now I'm going to try some other mystery resolution for this car. Apparently, number four cylinder gets too hot. Somebody's bright idea is to put a coolant hose right there and run it into the heater hose. This clamp is hitting the EGR valve. These guys got some real well thought out plans here. There, I smushed the thing down in my vise. Okay, that's in and done. Next. I'm going to tackle these spark plugs next. These can be a real pain sometimes. The reason why I'm putting plugs in this is because he wanted one number colder. This is the number he came up with. I'm sure the ones on this side are a little bit no fun at all too. More crammed in there. The cram de la cram. Well, so far the fuel pump on this car is the only thing that went together like a regular job. If you're doing this stuff to make money, I would say just steer clear of it. You know, if it's your own car and you got a million years to work on one of these things and time means nothing to you, then have at it. But if you're doing this for a living, just don't don't do it. I, I will I will I will never do something like this again. I don't know why I get talked into this, but live and learn. No Subaru aftermarket high performance junk. I'm not doing it anymore. I'm not rebuilding any Subaru engines anymore either. Anyway, I got this delete kit I'm gonna put on now. I already took off all of these bolts on the upper intake because I figured it'd just come off like a normal vehicle, but it's not a normal vehicle. I don't even think Subaru knows what normal is. I can break out these injectors. They look kind of different, but they're kind of not so different. That's fun, they give me three O-rings. I don't know what for. The owner of the vehicle brought these. And these pins I had to drill out because they didn't fit. Obviously, Grim Speed never tried to use their own product because this fits like a bunch of crappy monkey sh I got a big ground here. I got no place to put it. I could bolt it on a piece of plastic. Come in. Enter. Sheesh. I'm getting nothing but pissed off at this car. This intake's just a <laughs> to deal with. That <laughs> conglomerate mess of whatever you call it, hose. <laughs> I'm not putting it on. The information I'm getting is <laughs> garbage. The AOS? Yeah, I'm not <laughs> doing it. The <laughs> factory already tried to figure out how to make this <laughs> crankcase breather work, so they did all their bull and get onto it. It's like, who's right, you know? Yeah. Sorry, man. I didn't realize this was pain in the ass. Well, you're not going to know because you don't. Yeah. Know. I understand the aftermarket industry. <laughs> People try to sell everybody on <laughs> shit, And it's like, you know, most of them don't know what they're doing. You can fire off as many emails as you want. They'll just tell you how <laughs> great they are and apologize for being <laughs> holes, you know. Yeah. You don't, you don't get it. I mean, really, you, you won't unless you're me. Time for the flex fuel sensor, I guess. How nice of them to point the Phillips screw straight down. Why is everything I'm doing f***ing me? I didn't ask to get Cut the clamp off because it's upside down. This goes down below to the oxygen sensor because it says so. They actually make something that actually has words on it so you know where it goes. Amazing. I had to run a tap down it because I could only get a half a thread on this. Eighth inch pipe. Maybe it'll happen to you if you're doing this. Well, if anybody watches this video anyways, I doubt anybody will. What the hell for? Why would you want to do this? You'll just end up pissing and moaning a lot like I did. There, it's all put together. I don't think this thing will run though because the injectors are too big and it's going to need a tune. I can try to start it. It'll probably be a joke.
Yup, it smokes like a smoke pig. Check engine lights on, runs like ass. Now this guy's got me put some ICS suspension parts in here. I put some adjustable rear lower control arms in it. He found some used coilovers. These are kind of cheesy. They give you stainless steel bolts. One of them broke before I could even get it tight. Stainless is only like usually grade five. They're really not, they're not good enough for this. They shouldn't even be used. But that's what they give me. And then this one, I had to run a through bolt in here for the sway bar link. And that didn't work either. They give you some extra shims or something to put in here and none of it worked right. I tightened it all down and it, you know, it was all still loose. So I just put a shorter bolt in here. And this thing's way too close here. So it's, it's, it's almost impossible to get tight. It's all just more annoying aftermarket engineering. Stainless on a steel nylock. It galled up before I even got it tight. That was the first bolt I tried to tighten up. So I put anti-seas on the rest of them. I pulled those control arms in as far as I could. That's what it looks like now though. Okay, bye.